Today's video is going to take a look at what we call logarithmic functions. I am down at the bottom of page four in your notes. Um, I'm actually going to skip this pretest simply because you're not in class. A pretest isn't going to do me a whole lot of good. So I'm going to go right down here to the vocabulary. Now, what you need to know about logarithms, basically, is it's another way to write like 2 to the third equals 8 or 3 to the fourth equals 81. It's another way to write powers because what we're going to get now is we're going to start getting x, x's up in the exponents like 4 to the x uh, equals 7 or 10 to the x plus 4 equals 8. Trying to solve sorts of things like this. We have to have another way to write these. So how we write this is with a logarithm. First thing you have to know is every logarithm has a base. And a common logarithm, or the logarithm that if you look in your calculator, I suppose I can get my calculator on here and show you. If you were to take a look at your calculator, uh, the logarithm that your calculator knows is base 10. All calculators, the log button, which if I pop my calculator up here, the log button is going to be right above, I believe it's above the STO button over here on the side. Yeah, the log button is uh, right above here. This is the log button. Whenever you punch that, it's going base 10. Whenever you push this LN, this LN button right below it, that stands for natural logarithm. That is to the base E. And we didn't talk about it in a video, but we did in class. The number E is simply a number developed by Leonard Euler that helps us to cancel out and kind of do some certain things with logarithms. So basic logarithms, they always are to a base, like 10 or E. Or if you look down here, we're eventually going to get to bases of, ten, of 2, 3, 7. Let's do a little warm-up here. Uh, for example, 3 to the x power equals 9. Well, since I know that 3 squared is 9, x here is 2. Uh, x to the third equals negative 8. I'm asking what times what times what will give me negative 8. And the answer to that is negative 2. Because negative 2 to the third is negative 8. 10 to the 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power will give you 1. So that's nice. And the last one, 10 to the x equals 0 .001. If you're not sure how to do this one, here's where I'm going. In my calculator, I'm going to punch in this 0 .001. 0 .001. I go here to the math button. I'm going to push enter, and so my calculator gets it as a fraction. So technically, this is 1 over 1,000. And since 1 over 1,000, I'm asking how do I get 10 to be 1 over 1,000? Well, it has to be a negative power because that's how I get the 1 over part. And 10 to the third will give me 1,000, so the answer there is negative 3. How do these help us? Because we're going to ask ourselves that question a lot as we look at these logarithms. First of all, let's talk about rewriting logarithms as exponential powers or writing them from exponential powers to logarithmic functions. Remember this if and only if, if you remember back from geometry, is a biconditional statement, meaning this is true, and going the other direction is also true, meaning this is true and also going back the other way. All right, the log base b of y, if you have something like this equal to some power x or equal to a number x, you can rewrite this, and I call this the circle process. You may want to uh, jot that right here. I call it the circle process. reason I call it the circle process is because if you want to rewrite a log, you start right here with the base, you go across the equal sign to this power over here, and you set it equal to whatever number is right by the log. So I would go b, which they have right here, to the x, which they have right there, equals, go back across the equal sign, it's equal to y. So, and vice versa. If you had b to the x equals y, you would go log base b, do a circle process, you would go log base b of y equals x. You still go kind of around in a circle. Uh, the expression log base b is y is read as log base b of y. That's how we read these things. So when I go to the next page here on page 5, I look at this. This reads as log base 4 of 1 equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form by following the circle process. I'm going to go 4 to this power equals that right there. 4 to the 0 equals 1. I don't have to solve anything because it's just asking me to rewrite same thing here, I'm going to go circle process, base, across the equal sign, back across the equal sign. So I end up with 1 fourth to the negative 1 equals 4. Make sure I remember to put this in parentheses. 
Okay, rewriting it going the other way around. If we want to write a exponential into a log, I'm going to go log, same thing, circle process, log base 3 of 81 equals 4, doing the circle process. Log base 3 of 81 equals 4. Log base 10 of 0.01 is negative 2, but the reason I don't have to write base 10 is because, remember, if we go back a slide here, the common logarithm is always the base 10. So if, it's, if it ever is to the base 10, which it is here, you don't have to write the 10 down below. You just go log 0.01 equals negative 2. Uh, common logarithm we just decided is base 10. Log 10 of x, you can just rewrite it as log of x. You don't have to write it as log base 10. Uh, natural logarithm we decided is base of e and log e to the x. That will cancel out. And uh, remember, anything base E, we're going to write it as the ln. So the log and the E turn into this natural log. All right, uh, using a calculator, figure these out. As long as this is log with no other base down here, if this was a 2 or something, we couldn't do this. But since it's a log just by itself, I can go to my calculator here. And I'm going to simply just punch in log of 15. I'm going to go log 15. Enter, and I get 1.17, 1.176. And you can do the same for all of these, using the ln and the log. I'm not going to go over every single one of them because it's just simply punching them into a calculator. What I am going to go through, though, is evaluating them without a calculator. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. If I were to use, it says evaluate the expression without using a calculator, there's two ways to think about this. Way number one is you could do the circle process, meaning 3 to some power over here has got to be 81, because technically there's an equal sign here. 3 to some power over here equals 81, meaning if you have 3 to the blank equals 81, you're asking 3 to what power gives you 81, which is 4. 3 to the 4th power is 81. So uh, I'm trying to get 8 from 1 half, so 1 half to some power here is going to be 8. Well, since this is a fraction this isn't, I know it has to be negative something. And 2 cubed is 8, so it's going to have to be negative 3. The negative because I had to flip it from a fraction, and the 3 because 2 cubed is 8. Uh, 1 half, trying to change that into 0.25 is 1 fourth, so 1 half squared would give me 1 fourth, because 1 1 is 1, 2 squared is 4, so the answer here is just 2. Notice, when you evaluate a log, there is no more logs left over. It's just a plain number, like 4, negative 3, 2. Here, when you got log 5, uh, 0.04 is the same as 1 over 25. I just showed you earlier how to punch that into your calculator. You could go 0.04, math, fraction, enter, enter. And you'll get 1 over 25. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, that's convenient. Excuse me. Uh, so I'm asking myself 5 to what power will give me... Oops. 5 to what power will give me 1 over 25? And since I know this is a fraction, this isn't, it's got to be negative something. And to get 5 to be 25, you've got to go negative 2. So the answer is just negative 2. Last one, log base 9 to 3. You're saying 9 to some power has got to be 3. Since this base is smaller than this, and I know the square root of 9 is equal to 3, we've got to remember back from last chapter, square root means 9 to 1 half power. So the final answer there is 1 half. That is how you can evaluate logs without a calculator. Something else you're going to have to be able to do with logs. Flip it over to page 6. All these inverse properties. So we're going to get these inverse properties. And then uh, I'm going to show you inverse functions. And I think... Yeah, and then we're going to take a look at a checkpoint. So let's start with logarithm base 1. Lo or excuse me, the logarithm of 1. Whenever you have the logarithm of 1, it does not matter what this b is right here. The log of any number... Well, I can even show you. So if you have the log base b of 1 equals blank, you're trying to figure out this b to some power has got to be 1. The only way to get a number to be 1 with a power is 0. So this here is always going to be 0 because b to 0 equals 1. Kind of doing the same thing on a different page. If you go log base b of b, you're trying to say, okay, b to what power over here is going to give me b? b to blank equals b. Uh, so b to the 1 would equal b. So therefore, whenever these two 
Whenever these two things match right here, these two, it's going to cancel out to give you a 1 because b to the 1 equals b. So how do we use that here? It doesn't matter what this 5 is down here. The log of 1 is always 0. Log 3 of 3, those kind of cancel out. It leaves you with the 1. Log x of 1, it doesn't matter what this x is. It just matters that this is a 1. It's still always 0. So there's a couple special properties to look for. And the last, uh, inverse properties. Like if you have log base b of b, if these two things right here are the same again, they are going to cancel each other out. And that's actually what goes in the blank right here. What goes in the blank is cancel. Uh, log base b of b will cancel, and you're left with just an x. So log base b of b, x is equal to x. So this log 5, 5 here would cancel out. Leaves you with just the 3 right here. Vice versa, if you had b to some log power, and as long as this b and this b match, then these will cross out, and you're left with just x. Like 6 log 6, that cancels out to be just 3. As long as this and this are the same, and this and this are the same, they will cancel out. So let's do some examples down here on the bottom. 7 log 7. Because this 7 and this 7 are the same, those can cancel out, and you're left with just an x. Log 4 of 4. Because this and this are the same, you can cross those out, left it out and you're left with an x. 10 log 2. Remember, if you have just a plain log written, technically this has a 10 down here. We just don't write it. So because this is a 10 and this is a 10, a little 10 down here, those match, those cancel, and you're left with 2. And the last one, a little bit weird. You've got a log base 3 of 9 to the x power. These do not match, so you can't cancel them. But what you can do is you can rewrite 9 to be 3 squared, because 9 is 3 squared. Don't lose your x up there. And now this 3 and 3 are the same. Those will cancel out, and you're left with 2x for an answer. Last thing we're going to do is inverse functions using logs. If you remember back to last chapter, and if you don't remember back, go look at the video on inverse functions in chapter 7. Here is how you find inverse functions. Step 1, you flip the x and the y. So I'm going to go x equals log 3y. And here I'm going to flip these as well. So I go x equals log 1 half of y of y. Okay, to solve this, all I'm going to do to get rid of this log is I am going to rewrite this using the circle process. So let me get a different color here. I'm going to go 3. Remember, the circle process says you've got to go across the equal sign and then back across the equal sign. So I go 3 to this power over here equals that number over there. Since I have now successfully resolved for y, I can put a little negative 1 in there, meaning, and remember, this negative 1 just means inverse, and that is what my inverse function is. The inverse function of log 3x is 3 to the x. Inverse function over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rewrite using the circle process. I'm going to go here, the base, across the equal sign, back across the equal sign. So I end up with 1 half, in parentheses, to this power over here, which is x, set that equal to y. And since I now have resolved for y by itself, I can include the negative 1 in there, which simply means inverse. And that's what the inverse function of log to the 1 half base of x. Okay, so let's take a look at some checkpoint here. What I want you to do now is I want you to try these 7 right here on this 8.4 checkpoint. I will put the answers to these online, but try these 7 on your own. Good luck.